Okay, guys, welcome to Dylan's Little Hobbies, and today I am going to be reviewing Star Wars Rebels Season 4, the rest of the mid-season. Today we have Episode 10. Oh my god, I need a drink for this one. Sponsored by Sprite. No, we are not. Okay. Wow. So, let me just get the first part out of the way. The biggest thing about this episode. The ending of this episode. I have not seen episode 11. When recording this, I have not seen episode 11. I've only watched episode 10 thus far. And I am just so excited to talk about it, especially the ending. The ending of this episode, when Kanan is protecting his friends. So let me explain what happens. A big explosion ha happens, they're on some sort of fuel gauge. And I, as soon as I heard that they were going to be on a fuel gauge, I thought, you know what, yeah, this is going to end up in a big explosion. I did not expect them to do this. So, you know, they're, sa uh, they're saving S uh, uh, Sindula, and they're on this little ship, and as the blast hits the, uh, hits the, fuel, the fuel tank, it explodes, and Kanan jumps off using the force. And keeps the blast back. While at the same time, Sindula is of course very worried about him. She jumps over, tries to grab him, and he uses the force very similar, very similar to what happened to uh, Ahsoka Tano when Ahsoka Tano used the force to kick everyone back when she was fighting Darth Vader as it exploded. Very similar thing happened. She, he did that to Sindula to, of course, save her as the explosion engulfs Kanan as far as we know. We, remember, I have not seen episode 11 yet. I know the title of episode 11 is Caleb Doom. And this one was uh, a Jedi Knight. And oh my god, guys. When I first saw that, you know what? I don't do live reactions for a very simple reason, because simply I don't want to get in trouble with, I don't want to deal with the reaction thing. I mean, a commercial is a commercial, but I wish I did a live reaction to this, because when, oh my god, when that happened, you should have saw my face. I don't even know what my face looked like. All I know was I was on the edge of my seat. But as the episode faded into that white, I'm not even keen. I fell off my chair. I'm not even keen. And I, and I sat on the ground for at least, I think, about five minutes before I got up. And I had to go do my chores. You know, I, I had nothing special. I, I took out the trash, cleaned up the dog poo. Etc. Etc. You know, nothing special. But while I did my chores, I thought about what the heck am I going to say about this episode. And I decided right off the bat that I had to talk about the ending first. Because the ending of this episode was incredible with everything that we had. You know, it, it felt very much like an end to Caleb Doom. An end to, of course, Kanan. And I want to say this right now. So if it was up to me, this would be his death. Um, I wasn't expecting it. I mean, look, look, I know a lot of people are going right now, who cares about canon? No one cares about canon, apparently, because uh, Star Wars doesn't care or, or about canon. Uh, a, lot, a lot of people have backlash on Disney right now because... They have, in fact, contradicted things in the movies uh, to the books, and they don't care about canon anymore at this point now, it seems. But uh, I care about canon still, and 
Kanan and Ezra, they need to die. They just do. Everyone on this team, except Syndulla, because she's in a, a Rogue One, there's a small mention of her. Everyone else has to die in this series eventually. I, I think Sabine might survive and go back to Mandalore. But other than that, Kanan and Ezra, I believe, are going to die. And I was not expecting them... I was not expecting them to you know, you do a death right right as this episode started, you know? I was not expecting them to do another death to a very beloved, uh, um, very serious character right as the, the mid-season starts, but my god. If it was up to me, just because, again, I wanted it, that doesn't mean I was expecting it. And if it was up to me, this would be his death. Because I thought it was incredible. Not only does he get to say, uh, save Sindula, he gets to hear from Sindula that, uh, that uh, she loves him. And I loved that scene, by the way. I love the fact that in this season, they really are uh, um, emphasizing it heavily that they... That those two are a couple. And I really like the fact that they are emphasizing that a lot. But uh, he got her, uh, off the love message from her. He got the kiss. He pretty much say, uh, said goodbye uh, to his students, Sabine, and of course Ezra. And he's fighting to protect his friends. If it was up to me, that would be the perfect ending for him. That I couldn't really think of a better way to send him off other than fighting Vader, you know? Uh, because uh, if somehow he ends up fighting Vader for real, then he will die. Uh, it's that simple. If he ends up fighting Vader, he'll die. But other than that, this would be a perfect ending to him. And I really, really wish that they would, they would pull the trigger. I have not seen episode 11 yet, but my prediction is that they are not going to kill him. They're going to come back and he's going to show up bruised but okay, you know? Uh, you know, I truly do believe the only reason why Star Wars Rebels was even allowed to do this was because the very next episode comes out at the same time where they can say, Oh no, he's okay, kids, because I swear, if... Thinking of the little kids that are watching the show, this is a very dark and serious moment for Star Wars Rebels. And Star Wars Rebels has had dark and serious moments before, but you know what? Even with the death of Sabine Ain's mother, if that happened, it would not have been as serious and as emotionally heart wrenching as the death. Of Caleb Doom or Kanan uh, Jarrus, and I believe the only reason why uh, why they got away with it in this episode is because they have the next episode to say, "Oh no, don't worry, kids, he's back alive." I'm, my prediction is they're gonna do that. I don't want them to do that. I would really like this to be the end of him, and then uh, maybe Sindula. Uh, starts talking about the life of Caleb uh, Doom, you know, telling them the real story of Caleb Doom. That's what I would love. They're not going to do that. If they do that, I am going to be very surprised because that is what I want. But they're not going to do that. They're just not going to do that. Caleb Doom, Canon Jarrus. From this episode, it looks like he's dead. From this episode, it looks like he's dead. The episode starts out really, really awesome. So, you know, it, uh, I love the idea of Kanan doing the samurai trick, cutting his hair, shaving the beard, uh, and he says some, something to uh, you, uh, Ezra. He, I can't remember what, what it was word for word, even though I just watched it an hour ago. But he said because of his feelings towards Sindula, he doesn't trust himself with the mission. He trusts himself to do the mission, but not his plan. And that's when Ezra comes up with the plan 
where uh, they're going to fly guider and guiders and make themselves look like they're lo lo lothal bats. Lo I almost said lothal cats. Lothal bats. They're going to make themselves look like bats flying in the night sky and it actually works. Once they get on to uh, you, uh, the base of the Empire, they split up. Sabine and Ezra goes looks, goes looks for a ship. They're also in uh, Stormtrooper uniforms. It's actually pretty cool. And of course, as Kanan, I mean, Kanan goes looking for Syndulla. And the torture that Syndulla has received was just incredible. I, I was not expecting them, I was expecting the, uh, M to uh, like, like hear her screams or something like that, but I was not expecting them to do it on camera, considering that this is a very little kid show. I, I thank them so much for that. That was just incredible. And then, and then Thrawn comes out and starts basically trash talking Syndulla uh, about uh, about that little I, that little statue that he has. Apparently, it has uh, a sentimental f uh, a value to, of course, Syndulla's family. And we also found out that she has a brother that unfortunately died and. I thought that that bringing that piece of art back into the story was amazing and fantastic. I love the fact that they did that. And the way they just did Thrawn in this episode made him... I've never been more scared. He, he, to me, in that moment that we saw him, he, he looked more terrifying to me than Vader does in A New Hope. For some reason he just does the red eyes the blue skin and that calm but evil voice that he has just gave me chills it really did i i thought it was fantastic what they did with them and then of course uh kanan sa uh, saves he, he sa uh, saves sindula and gives her, uh, her back the little a little statue thing again. I, I can't remember what it's called, guys. Let me know down in the comments below what that statue thing is called. But he say, uh, aims her, and they had a couple jokes about the stormtroopers who got uh, uh, being uh, up by the Lothcats in the last couple of episodes. I thought that was actually a pretty good callback to that. That, that was actually pretty funny. But... Uh, this is the biggest thing that was mentioned in this episode, other than, than of course, the probably death of uh, Kanan Jarrus, that I just, when I heard of it, I almost jumped out of my seat. Uh, it was so incredible to hear it. So he's actually talking to Tarkin. Uh, yeah, Thrawn is talking to Tarkin. And Thrawn mentions Project... Uh, um, uh, something dust? I can't remember what it is. Oh my god, Rogue Stardust. That's what it is. Rogue One's my favorite movie of uh, Star Wars, and I can't even remember uh, what what the code name in, in that is. Stardust. He mentions Project Stardust. That was incredible. And uh, th then he said, uh, "Is if you want an aunt to move forward with your own project, Thrawn, you have to talk to the Emperor himself." So he is Thrawn is apparently by the end of this episode going to uh, Cor a Coruscant to talk to the Emperor about his own project, while the Emperor seems like to be giving up on all projects except for, of course, Project Stardust. The Death Star! The Death Star, guys! It's still a big part of Star Wars, and I really like the fact that they are tying that in to Star Wars Rebels very, very well. Especially when you consider the time zone is very, very close. And I just wonder, how close are we going to get to Rogue One? You know, I, I, I would love it if we got to see 
the flight at the end of Rogue One in the eyes of the uh, Star Wars crew, Star Wars Rebels crew, but I don't, I believe they said they're not going to do that, but are we going to get close to that? I wonder how close we are going to get to Rogue One. Nonetheless, fantastic episode, and guess what? It's not even over yet. I still have episode 11, 11 to watch because they came out with both episode 10 and 11. I am going to go watch episode 11. Thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you ne next time. Share, subscribe, like this video, and go watch my review for episode 11, which will be in the description below. Thank you guys for watching. I'm out. Bye.